two Vietnamese women hiding in the shrub. Um, he shot one in the head and tied the other to a tree. The oh. first woman was still breathing. He cut off her head and put it on a pole for the enemy to find. He then took a slice from her thigh, cooked it, and ate it. Was it cannibal now? Oh. With the other woman, he made her perform oral sex before raping her at one point. She, oh my god, this guy's a fucking monster. I don't uh, like him. N- no! He's not no. my favourite person either. No, uh, I don't like him. Fuck, war can have some horrible effects on people, right? Mm. Well, like like we've said before, it might not be anything to do with it. It was just probably going to go down that route anyway. Who knows? Probably. But especially with the Viet- Vietnam one, you hear a... Uh, Here's some horrible stories yeah. that came out. Even now, with the, some some of the soldiers that go into war now, they're not they they shouldn't be there. Essentially, they're there for the wrong reasons. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, uh, I'm not saying about that about all army people. No, no, no. I think um, people could understand. You know. Yeah, people who a, people who go out and protect the country from yeah. assholes who want to uh, do bad things, people. That's a good thing. That's a yeah. good thing to want to do. Um, I've I've met other people in my life. I've met other people in my family. You've mm-hmm. met other people. We spoke about other people. Mm-hmm. Love them. Fine. Whatever. Whatever your reasons uh, for going, as long as they're positive and you want to protect your family and the people of your country, that's mm-hmm. a very noble thing to do. And hats off to do. Thank you if you're listening. Any people in the army, it's very nice. Uh, but to the people out there who just want to use the army to facilitate their uh, tantalizing urges to kill and murder, fuck you, mm-hmm. essentially. <laughs> uh, so here we go. Uh, all the bloodlust he believed was justified by the horrors of the conflict. No, not. Uh, there's another bit here, by the way, that I just skipped out because I saw that it involves 11 year old girls and rape, and I, I just don't. Mm, it, it, no, just, no, no. it just looked like it was more. Ah, uh, well, I've got to read it. Um, um. Uh, oh, he uses a word I don't like. I'm not saying that. I'm going to rephrase this. Uh, oh, apparently he put razor blades up. Um, no, 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 no. Oh, oh God! Fuck! Oh my God! Don't just do that. To I'm say sorry. It. I'm sorry. I've got to say it. I've got to say it. But people at home, I didn't realize how gross this story was. Um, so apparently, they, he put razor blades inside uh, prostitutes' vaginas. Um, apparently, he shoved them inside a cup deep inside, uh, where they would never know until until it was too late. Um, when uh, some of the GIs would. Uh, sex with them. They're using a lot more graphic and, no, and they're, no, no. they're using some language here, which I'm not uh, a fan of using when I'm talking about people who have been victims of murder. So, uh, so when the GIs would have sex with them, uh, it would slit their penises to shreds or cut them clean off. Uh, oh, hang on. I don't understand this at all. Would, uh, as with some guys, ROK Koreans who took a uh, a sex worker uh, and put a fire hose inside her and turned on the water she died almost instantly her neck jumped about a foot from her body another time we took another sex worker these are using not sex workers uh, and tied her to two small trees legs to the trees bent down she had a razor blade inside her vagina uh, she was cut from her anus to her chin then the trees were let go she slit in half let her hang in between the trees oh what the no. hell He's talking here, not about himself. He's talking about pe- other, other GIs people. and what he witnessed. So he's saying that what I did is fine because I saw people do all this. Oh, my oh God. Oh, my gosh. That's so bad. Mm. No, I don't like it. No. I like it my curiosity is, have, were these people ever found and, and trialed for this? Probably not, right? Fucking hope so. Um, when he returned home, he was highly agitated and found it difficult uh, to relax. Um, he began to beat his wife and was incredibly aggressive. Uh, a psychiatrist told his wife, Linda, that he needed to be committed for treatment and rest. Uh, however, Linda, being a Christian scientist, uh, did not believe what the doctors uh, had to say and refused to sign the papers for his committal. Uh, I'm assuming that's probably a bad move on her part. Yeah. Um, without the therapy he desperately needed, Arthur's mental state began to decline and he became increasingly irritated with Linda and her family, usually over the adherence to the religion, which he saw as nothing more than witchcraft. It really sounds like uh, the war changed him into... Uh, it really seemed to stick all the ingredients that were already there for 
a horrific psychopathic monster. It's kind of like when a stew is cooking, you put all the ingredients in, which is what's happening before you went to the war. And it made it and this gross dish. The war is made the stew boil over. It really makes sense. sense. Yeah, well, like it's been left there to fester. Like you've yeah. been cooking up some th- trouble and then it's been left there to fester. <sighs> Uh, he believed that the spirit of a 13th century cannibal... Where is this going? <laughs> what the fuck is this dude? He believed that the spirit of a 13th century cannibal, <clears throat> Ariemes, possessed his body and drove him to rape, murder, and cannibalize. So he's uh, he's relinquishing responsibility by saying to himself that... So he's possessed. That he's possessed. Mm-hmm. Okay, I get it. Uh, in 1988, uh, he was released from prison after serving 15 years for the sadistic murders of two children in Watertown. Um, so he did get arrested at some point. Yeah. 15 years for murdering two children, that's nothing. Not enough, right? Uh, especially they they should have like given him like some sort of psychiatric evaluation yeah. to assess yeah. whether or not he would do it again yeah. uh, out on parole he was sent to Rochester to live uh, after residents in two other communities objected to his presence and rightly so mm-hmm. uh, right about then Ariemes came back to possess him uh, and helped him with a 20 month murder spree in which he bagged and chewed on 11 women oh my days um, once in custody um, Arthur detailed his cannibalistic deeds, explaining that he was possessed by his shrewish mother's spirit, as well as Aramimis. Aramis. So this- it wasn't only this god thing, it was also his mother's spirit he was possessed with, yeah. This is an absolute joke. Uh, the the sort of rationaliz- rationalization that some of these people try and kid themselves with yeah. as to why they're doing these things is yeah. insane. Well, it literally is insane, right? This no, is like they no, have to definitely see how it's going to be insane. Um, so, Mom, who he esteemed and resented uh, simultaneously, um, enjoyed ramming broomsticks up his ass when he was young? What? I'm just going to say allegedly here, because I don't know where this story goes or if that's true. Yeah. Again, it could be one of those things that he said, and, and you know... That may not necessarily mm. be. Like the other guy we, we spoke about uh, sort of last time or the time before, where like his dad was actually a really nice guy and then he believed that little play fights he was having was actually a battle to the on. death. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the way he had sort of uh, mm-hmm. imagined that over the years. So maybe this is sort of similar, maybe. Um, receiving no mercy from the jury in February 1991, Arthur was sent to the Sullivan Correctional Institute in Fallsburg, New York, to serve a 250-year sentence. Yes! Whoa! I like that <laughs> sentence. 250 years! That's a big daddy sentence. Because that that's is. not life. Because life don't mean life all the time, honey. Life can mean uh, like 30 years, 35 years or something like that. But if you give him the fucking 250 year sentence. You know he's gone. In, that's, uh, for the that's, yeah, that's life, really. Yeah. Uh, that's life. Uh, curiously, in 1990, he received 10 write in votes during New York's gubernatorial race. Check me out for reading off the word gubernatorial. I, mean, I was going to ask what that meant, but there's no point in me asking. Uh, about gubernatorial? Yeah. Ooh, no. Mm. No, that's not even go down that one. <laughs> uh, gubernatorial, I believe, is in regards to the mayorship. I All believe. right, okay. I okay. Believe. You don't want to know why I know that. It's from a, the no. geekiest place possible. Um, well, well. If anyone's ever played Monkey Island video games, you'll know <laughs> that there is a gubernatorial race within that video game uh, between two mayors. Oh, okay, uh, okay. On, on July, <laughs> on July tenth, nineteen ninety seven, Arthur married his longtime sweetheart, uh, Clara Neal. Why did she marry him? Did she not know? Did she not get the memo? Mm, you do get people who like want to marry people in prison. That's true. Uh, in a simple ceremony in the prison's visiting room, uh, she says, "It was a nice, it was nice and old, eh." <laughs> said the bush and bride. Uh, the two started dating before his conviction. So she was dating him before he was in prison. So she oh. wasn't like, oh, I want to be one of those kooky girls who date, date a guy on death folk. row. Yeah, because yeah. there's some of those people I'm like, you're only really dating him because he's on death row and you know you don't actually have to be alone in a room with him. 
but you can without just still security say, I'm dating so and so. I'm dating Charles Manson, <laughs> <laughs> like that. When the girls all gather around for for afternoon lunch, they're having a little uh, liquid lunch, having some biscotti, <laughs> some little uh, orange and champagne. And go, oh, this guy at the bug store, he's crazy. Well, guess what, ladies? I'm dating Charles fucking Manson. That's one way. And to the alcohol is in the middle and say, "Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what a dreamboat!" <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> Only in the darkest parts of the world would that ever happen. <laughs> but it's possible. Uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, this Clara Neal lady. Uh, she uh, was dated in before the conviction. However, at, the, at that specific time, uh, Arthur was married to the other woman. So it took ten okay. years. Uh, mm-hmm for them to sort of uh, join together for the of things. Um, his previous wife, Rose. What happened to Linda? What? Rose? What happened to Linda? Wasn't Linda a thing? Linda was a thing. And then we jump forwards. I'm assuming he's gone through a few of these women. Yeah. I'm assuming Linda bailed. Wait, she yeah. made like Christian yeah. and bailed. Um, <laughs> oh, she was a Christian. Um <laughs> Uh, so yes, previous wife Rose died in the spring. Oh, I wonder if she knew. I hope she didn't know. And I hope she's a sweet lady. Uh, mm-hmm. Making the union possible under the eyes of God. Uh, under the State Department of Correctional Services policy, uh, Arthur and uh, Clara uh, will be eligible for conjugal visits. Ew. Um, <laughs> that's all I can say there. When she knows where he's been, when she knows where he's been and what he's done. Yeah. I hope Shoving his dick in a cow. And yeah, no. yeah. No. 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 You know what? I hope, I hope she gets a good handful of STDs from that. I hope she does. To be fair, she's an innocent lady, so... No, she is not. She's encouraging <laughs> behaviour. She's providing pleasure to a man who is gross and has killed children and women <laughs> and done the most vilest and comparable things imaginable. Yeah, I, he shouldn't I be given the time of day by from. anybody apart I from people who give him from. the food through a slit in the door. Uh, Neil, st- uh, Clara stated that she loves him and stands by her cannibal, uh, quote unquote, no matter what. Um, Jeez, <laughs> oh, some people, man. Uh, Arthur, of course, used Clara's car to pick up, have sex with, and then kill his victims. Okay, so she was, she was, she was. Oh, okay, yeah, no, yeah, no, that's fine. No, I hope she gets every form of gonorrhea. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> going. I hope her, her vagina foofs up into a big cauliflower mass. So I hope she, she gets can, blue waffle. Blue waffle, yes, we hope she gets blue waffle from this. Normally we wouldn't wish such a thing on a lady. Isn't blue waffle actually a myth? Uh, I don't know, maybe. I think it is. Potentially, yes. I've never seen a blue waffle in real life, IRL. You've never seen a vagina in real life? I have! <laughs> don't tell! <laughs> I am! Uh, on, no, on, on September 19th, 1999, uh, Arthur was punished with two years in solitary confinement and lost his art privileges for five years for having agents sell his paintings on the internet auction site eBay. Shit, so he was selling art uh, while I was in prison. I hope those I I hope those uh, agents got uh, some as well. Uh, yeah. yeah, I don't know how he would be able to communicate with them and give his art out. I don't know. Well, there's a will, there's a way. Mm. Uh, Arthur, at 54, uh, will be confined to a cell for uh, 23 hours a day at Farsberg Sullivan Correctional Facility. Uh, officials say he has been mailing drawings and oil paintings of Marilyn Monroe and stock car driver Dale Earnhardt to dealers. <laughs> Must be just a fan, I guess. Um, in return, uh, they would send him gifts like clothes and shoes instead of cash. Uh, prison officials said Shawcross did not violate the state's son of Sam law because he was not accused of benefiting from the actual crimes that led to his arrest. Ah, understood. The loophole is there. So the son of Sam law um, comes into play where, uh, say, for example, uh, a criminal who's in prison. Uh, I'm not reading this either. This is like from top of the dome, baby. So son, son of Sam Law. Oh, that's the end of the story, by the way. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, I'll look at... Uh, we'll take a break in a second and just to figure out where he's up to now in this year. Okay. Um, 
Very slapdash this uh, this episode. Very sorry. But at least we put on. Uh, yeah, Son of Sam Law is kind of like um, if you were, for instance, to be an inmate in, in prison uh, and you wrote an autobiography from it, or someone else wrote your autobiography for you, yeah, uh, you couldn't then sell that book and have the proceedings go to you or have a percentage of the proceedings because what you're init- uh, essentially doing is you're profiting off your own murder. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So the 